from high atop the Harry De La Russa Stadium here in Revere, Massachusetts, welcome to another edition of Swanscott High School Varsity Football, where today the Big Blue take the road, cross two community lines, and take on the fighting and hosting Patriots of Revere High School. Hello, everybody. Mark McHugh on the Big Blue Sports Network, along with Ethan Big Cat Runstadler, the man behind the camera. Welcome back, Mike Johnson, MJ back from Florida. This one a must, obviously, for the Big Blue. It was a tough one last week, but let's first start with Revere. A tale of two cities, Mike. Revere won its first last week, taking care of Medford to the tune of 29-7. to And a small kid, quarterback freshman, 5'6", Calvin Boudreau, stepped up, ended up getting along the lines of 225 yards and two touchdowns, really sparked the team. Looking for more tonight against the Big Blue. And, and, and Mark, he was very efficient. 13 for 17, if, if my memory serves me. And, and the Patriots gave up the first points of the game. They, they went 20, down 7 zip, right. 29 unanswered. So uh, they, really, they really turned it around. So hopefully Swampscott can do the same tonight. Look for a guy named Zach Furlong to do the running for the Patriots. And uh, again, a beautiful night for football here. It's getting a little bit cool. Fall is in the air. Uh, nice stadium. Uh, they've done a great job here. Lights, etc. Should be a good one. On the other side of the coin, a very disappointing weekend last week for the Big Blue. 39-7, no longer in the ranks of the undefeated. English came in, handled them big time. The only score came towards the end of the game. It was a two-yard jaunt by Dylan January, and that's all she wrote for the Big Blue. Other than that, you had to really credit some the uh, the, the kids on English, Maddie Severance, um, uh, along with the fact too, the Prince Brown, uh, just a, 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 a terrific uh, output all uh, all the way around. Uh, uh, everything really clicked for Coach Carroll and the English Bulldogs. Right, and Swamp Scott, the, the, the old saying. The next game's the only game, and this is the next game, and they got to come out fighting for it. It should um, be a good one, too. Around the dial tonight, football, a lot of games. A couple of undefeateds in English. Classical at Somerville. English will be hosting Salem. Winthrop hits Stackpole Field to take care of Saugus over there. Marblehead is hosting Gloucester. Always a good matchup. Prep will be at Fenwick. Linfield, undefeated as well, goes to Ipswich. Peabody at Malden. The, the Catholic St. Mary's at Archbishop Williams, and of course the big one, High Mass over at BC High as St. John's invades the Eagles, Malden Catholic along at Xavarian, and Medford is at Everett. Everett, by the way, a phenomenal team this year, an incredible backfield, and next uh, on Saturday would be Kip at Neshoba, Tech at Northeast, and Danvers goes into Beverly. That will do it for the pregame. Keep it right here on the Big Blue Sports Network. All the first half action coming at you on the BBSN. It's the BBSN and you and Big Blue football. And you know that can't be bad. We'll be back right after a moment. Welcome back to first period action here at Harry De La Russa Stadium here. The Big Blue on the road taking on the fighting Patriots of Winthrop High. The captains right now for the coin toss for the visiting Big Blue, Colin Freire, Colin Walsh, Dominic Cotaspati, Alex Sheehan, Noah Carellio, along with uh, the captains for the uh, Revere High School, Ron Marciano and Ida Ballo. And uh, it looks as though now, as they pair off, uh, the Big Blue will be receiving. They will be rushing towards Seaside here in Revere. The um, uh, Revere team will be defending that goal. This one should be a good one. Both teams really need this game. Revere comes off of a terrific game and effort over in uh, Medford. Big Blue certainly looking to bounce back. And, you know, Mike, it's not really unheard of that uh, uh, Lynn English could lose a game. You know, so, Lynn, you know, English, Lynn English looks great. I wasn't there for the game last weekend, but uh, they look great, and they, they put a number on Swampscott. And I'm glad uh, when you're announcing the captains, Mark, what you need tonight is some senior leadership. This is the first time this team has tasted defeat. You need seniors to step up. This is their team. they gotta, they got to prove tonight that they're here, they're ready, they're ready to play. Beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem done by the Chico Pape. And of course, unfortunately, a technical malfunction just disturbed a little bit. A terrific, terrific rendition. But we are ready for some football. The Big Blue will be receiving the ball 11 minutes of first period action coming at you. Starting lineup for the Big Blue quarterback, as always, Colin Frein in the backfield will be Isaiah Bascon and Dylan January. 
the ends, Luke, Cody, Manny, Tashawa, Jonathan, Okari, Colin Walt, Jake McIntyre will be split along with Kataspani, who is the captain. The tackles will be Quest, Tyler, Lacey, along with Noah Carrario. The guards, Alex Sheehan and Mason Schultz. All comes behind the big guy, the center, Jake Bartram. And uh, this one should be a good one as we get set for first period action. It was nice to hear the crowd, Mark, fill in when the, uh, we had the technical difficulty with the announcing system. Absolutely. Kicking off for Revere will be number 11, Badar Howe. Kicking off from the 40. Deep is Bascon along with McIntyre. And here we go. We are underway. A short one. Ball will bounce. Get on Takes it. A funny bounce. And we'll see who picks it up. I think the Big Blue have it, but I don't know if they were thinking punt or not, but it looked like maybe not as alert, but it is Big Blue ball. It will be first down and 10 for Swampscott. Ball Swamp is on the 25-yard line. Swampscott has been very lucky in that play, Mark. No one covered the ball. People were stepping away from it. Whoa. First and 10 Good to get the ball the going first down. 25-yard line. First down and 10, big blue on the 25. Freire brings out the troops. To the bottom of your screen is McIntyre, along with Cotta Spotty. Barking out the signals is Freire. Bascon in the backfield. Immediately to throw the ball right into the center is Takata Spotty. He's bottled up, but not before he gets to the 32 yard line, where it'll be a second down and about three to four. Nice first play by the big blue. Caught a spotty right place, right time, and Freire sees him. Nice gain there. Uh, the the Via Patriots closed fast, but caught a spotty. Nice target for Freire. It will be second down and a long three for the big blue. Just underway here at Harry DeRusso Stadium. Glad you are with us on the big blue sports network. Bascon in the backfield. McIntyre to the bottom. Up top is Tashawa. On a second down and three in motion is Ariaki. Hits him. All good. He's got the first down and more up to about the 30, the 42, 43 yard line brought down by number five, Matt Stasio, along with number 11, Badar Howe, but not before the Big Blue rack up the first first down. And that was a good start for Big Blue. Night, the great play, Mark, right there. Oriaki took it in motion and, and went, had a nice cut up field and got a good gain out of it. The Freire led him perfectly on that one. So Big Blue now with a first down and 10 ball is on their own 40 three yard line. Nice crowd here tonight, Mark. Absolutely, it's a great place to watch a football game here. Freire barking out the signals, looking, fakes over to Bascon on the outside, it comes to Cotaspotty, Cotaspotty cuts, immediately swarmed under, maybe gets a yard or two, brought down by number six, James Cusis. So maybe for two, it'll be second down and a long eight for Swanscott. Couldn't tell if that was caught a spotty or Oriaki on that catch, Mark. I think, I think it was caught a spotty. Caught a spotty. 45 yard line. Looked like he made a nice cut inside, just couldn't shake that defender. So Big Blue starting out with a passing game here, second down and eight. Caught a Up spice. Top, number two is to shower to the bottom is McIntyre. Ball is handed off to Bascon. Here he goes. Bascon could blow it all the way down. He's Bunch and down to about the 29 yard line, the eye man, Isaiah Bascon, just gets the ball and runs when he knifes off of right tackle, Mike. It's like a hot knife through butter. Right, right through it, right through it, right off the tackle. And um, he was probably 15 yards downfield before they put, a, put an arm on him. Give credit to the Quest Tyler Lacey. It was a beautiful block on that that sprung him. It'll be first down and 10 big blue ball on the Patriot 30 yard line. In the backfield, number four, Dylan January on a first down. Trips right on top. Fake right out in center, and a great catch by McIntyre. Touchdown, Swampscott! Yes, sir! And that will stand because it will be a defensive interference, but it will be a 20 to 30 yard touchdown pass from Freire over to Jake McIntyre. And uh, J Mac puts it in and puts the big pass blue up six to nothing. So the pass interference is declined. It will be touchdown, Swampscott. And a great way to get started as Tom Frasoli, and you know this kid. Yes, I Tom do. Tom Frasoli, the freshman, will be in to try the extra point with number, number five, Freire, to hold 
So a good start for Swanska that takes them all of three minutes to get into the end zone here in Revere. I'll bet it you there, Mark. That was a great start for Swanscott. That's what they needed to do. Zoli is up, splits the uprights right through the middle. Perfect at the 8.33 mark. It is Swanscott seven and Revere nothing. I really like the way Swanscott mixed it up, Mark. It was pass, pass, run. Fantastic on that drive. Mixed it up. Revere had trouble covering. Uh, the offensive quarter there, I'm sure, I'm sure, saw a bunch of good things. Yeah, absolutely. They got a great start, and that's what they needed. This was something actually started this way against English. You were away and you didn't see it, but they, they, they held English right off the bat to, uh, to, to three basic plays. English punted. Swans got marched it down, but they just couldn't. They brought it down to about the 20-yard line, but they couldn't punch it in. And then it was just a series of incompletions, passes behind the back. All of a sudden, everything unraveled. It was hard to figure out why. That touchdown pass that McIntyre pulled in was a lot tougher than it looked. Absolutely. Guy draped on his back, interfered with him. He was still able to break it. Back to receive for the Patriots, number 23, Lou. Lucas Barboza along with number 27, Ali Mazur, as Frizzoli gets set to kick off here. 8.33 left to go in the first, it is the big blue seven. And Revere yet to touch the ball, but they do now. Ball comes down quickly to number 23, Luke Barbosa. Barbosa, however, is bottled up and will be brought down at about the 32 yard line in on the tackle, number seven, Bascon along. Nice little Where's return there, Mark. He got about 14 yards out of that return by the time he touched the ball. I think he got it inside the 20, so a nice little kick from Frizzoli. Uh, the angle was not high, but he got it down there pretty well. Connor Lynch also in on the stop. It'll be first down Patriots, first and 10 on their own 33-yard line. In at quarterback is Calvin Boudreau, who had a terrific game last week, 225 yards as they ended up taking care of Medford to the tune of 29-7. to Full backfield as Boudreaux barks out the signals on a first down and 10 for the Revere Patriots. Handoff comes quickly onto the outside to number 24, Darius McNeil. McNeil brought down quickly by number 10 for the Big Blue, Ethan Friedman, as well as Isaiah Bascon, but not before he ends up getting a good six yards on the play. It will be second down and a long four for the, back, the Patriots. The back made a nice play there, Mark. He bounced it outside fast, and he, and he made something out of nothing because Swanscott had it boxed up in the middle. And Swanscott, as we talked about in the first game that I called with you and had the privilege of calling with you, boy, they're big in the middle. Tight on the offense is the, the, the Patriots, Bader Howe on the bottom as Boudreaux calls out the signals. Behind center, ball comes quickly now. He brought down is number 22 on the play, Zachary Furlong. Furlong on the carry. Furlong gains at least four yards. It will be a third down and one for the Patriots with about seven and a half left to go in the first period. It's a big blue up seven to nothing. Glad you are with us on the Big Blue Sports Network. Keep it here all season long as we've got all the games for you. Right down to the end, playoffs, and then of course, going into the Super Bowl as we hope. Just short of that first down. I, if I was uh, Revere, I'd call for a measurement, but I think the, uh, the lead referee jumped in and made the call himself. Coming in with the play from the sidelines is Calvin Boudreau. Revere is coached by Lou Ciccatelli. The assistant coaches are Vin Gregorio, Jose Escobar, and Paul Norton. This will be a third down and one. Ball is handed off quickly, knifing through what looks to be the first down on a handoff to number 24, Darius McNeil. McNeil on the carry. And it is a first, first down, down as the chains are being moved. So first down first and 10 Revere. for Revere. The ball is on the 44-45 yard ball line ball of Revere. Correct, 45-yard line. Revere bakes the huddle over to the top of your screen is Badar Howe. Into the backfield, number 24 is Darius McNeil on a first and 10 for the Patriots. In motion, number seven is Jonathan Murphy. Back to pass and hitting Murphy. Eludes one and around, but Murphy bottled up for a gain of five, brought down by number one, Luke Cody, along with See, number, Murphy it was number 60 on the play as well. Nope, wrong number, See, excuse me. Number 66 on the play is Noah Carrario. So it will be a second down and four 
And uh, Revere moving the ball, Mike. Very nicely down the field right now. Second down and four for the Patriots. Ball oh, there's motion there, but no flag. Ball and being brought down by number 66, Noah Carrera. Furlong. Is Furlong. Caught in the backfield by Carrera. And a loss on the play will bring him back inside his own territory to a little over his own 49 yard line where it'll be a third down third and about five for the, the Patriots. It just happens, we were just talking about Noah Carrera and how, how well he's playing. He came up big right there for the Swamp's Got Big Blue. Another important third down for Revere. Ball on the 49 yard line, third and five. Spreading onto the other side is John Murphy on a third and five, calling out the signals, Boudreaux. Boudreaux back to pass, looking, throwing it downfield. It's just a bridge a bit too far over the head of the intended receiver, number seven, Jonathan Murphy. And there is a flag on the play, and it could be a defensive pass interference on the part of the Big Blue. Pass interference against Schwarzkopf. You know, Mark, you don't want to get on the refs, um, certainly as an announcer in a high school, high school uh, game like this, but boy, that, that looked really sketchy. Well, to an extent, you've got to give a bump here and there. I mean, it's a, a oh, interference well. is interference. You can really see it, but every now and then, if call you bump it. into something. Call it uncatchable, yeah. call it what you want, but it's Swamp's good. I thought they had really good, really good coverage there. First Revere. down and 10, Revere on the Swamp's got 35-yard line. To the bottom of your screen is Bedar Howe. Up to the top is number seven, John Murphy on a first and 10. Handoff is to number 24, he goes nowhere. Darius Whoa. McNeil brought down by the Wolf, Dom Cotaspati along with number seven, Isaiah Bascon. It will be a second down and nine Cut for the Patriots. Second and nine. Revere really hasn't gone outside much, which surprises me a little bit because Swamp's got his, I keep saying it's so big and stacked in that middle mark. Bottom of your screen is number 11, Badar Howe on a second down and nine. Full backfield for the Patriots. Pitch out comes quickly now. Around the corner, trying to get more. Number 23 is Lucas Barboza. Brought down by number four, Dylan January, uh, along with number down. 10, Ethan Friedman, but not before the Patriots get another first down. down. Sustained drive back. Uh, Revere just keeps moving the ball. Uh, and as I just said, I was surprised that they were working the ball inside. And of course, they go outside with that play, and they had a nice game. Rivera on the march on the Swamp's got 23 yard line, 342 left to go in the first split up to the top. Number seven is John Murphy to the bottom. Number 11 is Badar Howe on a first down and 10. Pedro straight signal behind the center. Ball is handed off quickly and we've got a flag on the play. Number 23 brought down Lucas Barboza. Barboza brought down carry. by number one, Luke Cody. Cody seems to be all over the place on the D. This will be his third tackle tonight. This is going to be a holding on the Revere Patriots, so this will bring it back. Big Blue undoubtedly will accept this penalty. A couple penalties so far this game, but the teams have been looking pretty sharp, Mark. A couple sloppy penalties, but that was clearly a holding. Just wanted to say thanks again for having me in your booth. Appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, Doug Sutherland, uh, last week, uh, just give him a shout out. He did a great job when you were down in Florida. Um, it was a lot of fun. Doug brings uh, a different dynamic into the into the press box, and uh, that's why I said to him afterwards, I said it would be a good marriage if the three of us, you know, he has a certain angle, you've got the uh, the um, uh, the color, and uh, of course the play by play, and we'll see. Maybe we can get it all together for the Marblehead game on a first down and 20 for the Patriots. Snap back to Pedro. Pedro looking to go down to the field, and he hits number seven, Jonathan Murphy. Murphy on a race. He's got the first down and more. Wow, big play for Revere, boy. Big line. play for Revere. Murphy I, on the reception. 
I couldn't tell who got beat around the end and lost contain mark, but I think Swamps got brought a little pressure and got burned with it. Murphy was brought down by number 40, Nick Riser. This will be first down and 10, Revere just outside the 10 yard line, so they will be able to get the first down. Ball looks to be at about the 13, 13 yard line, 14 yard line. Who's the corner low, Mark? I can't make out that number. Pardon me? Who's the corner low? Is that uh, 11? Is that Cody? I'm sorry, is that Friedman? Yes, it's Friedman. Okay, Friedman's number 10. On a, on a second down and one, so it was not a first down. Our apologies. Tight frame being sported by Revere on a second and one. In motion is number seven, and he's going to be dragged down the wall. Oh! Dom caught a spotty, bringing down number seven Murphy. on the play. The Jonathan Murphy, play. Dom caught a spotty, looking terrific on that one. It will be now bringing them back to a uh, third down and actually a lot more than where these chains seem to be. Wolf was all, all, all over that spying spying on that plane. This is definitely right though, a two down situation here, you know, on a third and five. Well, I don't, I don't know who Revere has for a kicker, so we'll see what they can roll out. So the bottom of your screen is number 11, Badar Howe. Murphy up top. On a third and five, back to pass is Boudreau. Boudreau looks swamped and brought down by number 50 on the play, Quest Tyler Lacey. Also in on the tackle, number 40, Nick Riser. This will bring up a fourth down and a bunch. And we'll see exactly Great what the Patriots Lacey. want to do on that. Ball is on the 35-yard line of Swanscott on a fourth down. Boy, Swanscott just... Reared up its backside Smart. the last uh, couple plays, Mark. They felt threatened and, and pushed them back. Great couple plays. We're under two minutes to go in the first period. It is the big blue seven and Revere nothing. Boudreaux coming back with the play on a fourth down and 13. Looks as though they will go with it. And they are. Tight offense, very resemblant to the Lynn offense, unless they're just going to stall. And we've got a timeout being taken by Revere with a buck 30 left to go in the first period. I've been impressed with Boudreau so far. Uh, he had a nice game, like I said, in the, uh, the pregame. 13 for 17 as a freshman. Anytime you're throwing the ball with that efficiency, that's great stats. For There's no doubt, too, game. that he's somebody to plan on. Because oh, he, did, sure. he did not get the start in the beginning of the season. They ended up going 0-3, and they had to do something. They put him in against Medford, and he simply shined. He's not a big kid, but he's young, so he'll grow into that role, but he's a leader already. Rock and roll on a Friday night here in Revere. I've really been enjoying the Patriot mascot, Mark. He's really getting the crowd excited tonight. He's a really, really good dancer. It's a great... Uh, time frame too. Everything is colliding all at once. Football, baseball, hockey, basketball. It's all, you know. I know you're a Yankees fan, us. so I'm happy for you. Was, uh, Can't say that I uh, was happy about the Red Sox departure. Let's see what Revere does here on a fourth down and 13. From the gun is Boudreaux. Big Blue looking to stop them at a minute 30 left to go. Boudreaux back to pass, looking. Fires long, fires deep. This will be incomplete. Intended for number 11, Baudar Howe. On the defense was number 10, Ethan Friedman, along with number 7, the I-man, Isaiah Bascon. Big Blue take over. First down in 10. Ball will be on about the 25-yard line of Swampscott. So Revere looking extremely impressive, bringing it down. Several penalties, shoot themselves in the foot. They end up giving the ball over to the Big Blue, and the Big Blue now with their second series of downs gets set to go. In what's the what's first interesting period. about that pass, Mark, is, is the Big Blue defense there made a really smart play. Instead of intercepting it, which I think they could have, they let the ball go to the ground so they'd have much better field position, and that's where we start right now. Empty backfield here as Frary barks out the signals. Everybody is split. Looks like everybody's going on trip this slow, one. Trip slow, trip slow. And he goes the Back other way. to pass. Intercepted. Intended for number three, Jonathan Oriaki. Intercepted on a nice play by number, we can get his number there, number 22 on the play on the interception, Zach Furlong. So Furlong 
Immediately gets the ball back Murphy, for Revere. Reception for Revere. First and ten for Revere from the Swampscott 48-yard line. That's a tough giveaway for Swampscott. Their defense was on. Their de defense mark was on the field over six and a half minutes, and now they got to go back out there and play against these guys. First down and ten. Revere ball is on the Swampscott 48 yard line. Number 22 in the backfield is Furlong with Boudreau barking out the signals, and the ball goes over the head, and Boudreau falls on it. Smart play. Gladly takes the loss. Ball comes back into their own territory on the 40. 244 yard line where it'll be second down and a little bit more yardage look about a second down and nine or second down and 19 excuse me for the uh second and 17 for Revere from their own 44 yard line. I like the play calling by uh, Chris Cameron you know you, you get worn down a little bit defensively and you go for that that quick hit on that interception you had trips low but uh got to give it to the Patriots defense they were not fooled one bit Came up with a big, big interception here, so let's see what they can do with it. Ball is on the 44-yard line, second down, and a short 19 to go for the first. Boudreau brings the troops out. On a fake handoff, and a nice one over to Zach Furlong. Furlong still on his feet, and brought down into Swampscott territory. Nice hard run there, Mark. Absolutely, brought down by the Wolf, Don caught a spotty. Furlong, I think he carried, carry. I think he carried two guys about three yards. And that is going to do it for the first period, Mike. At the end of one, the Big Blue seven and Revere nothing on a touchdown at, uh, on a pass, a 30-yard pass from Frary to the J-Mac. And that's all she wrote for the first. So at the end of one, it is Swampscott seven and Revere nothing. Keep it right here on the BBSN. We'll be back with all the second period action in just a moment. Welcome back to second period action. Third down and nine in motion, number 11, Badar Howe. And uh, Boudreau looking to the sidelines, looking for a play, and they are forced with a timeout. And let me tell you, Lou Ciccatelli is not happy. Throws his program to the ground. The troops come over and gather around him, and we'll find out exactly what they're going to do on the third oh, down and yeah. nine. We are just underway in the second period here. Is that their second timeout, Mark? I can't make it out on the board. That's the second timeout. So that hurts having to call that town so early in the second second quarter. One score we got today, unfortunately, the uh, the boys soccer um, uh, getting uh, uh, taking it on the chin today. Yeah, lost to Danvers. The, they're getting better though. The soccer team's uh, hanging in there. The girls team, uh, another good year for them. Uh, oh, I see the uh, the Swampscott Swampscott cheerleaders are setting up now. The Big Blue Girls tonight, they invade Dr. Daring Stadium over in Danvers. They will be taking on the um, uh, uh, Danvers at uh, a 7 o'clock start. That will be a tough game. Basically, they've lost a couple now. They've lost to Marblehead 1 to nothing. They went out and played Hoosick Valley last Saturday and were tied 2 to nothing, which was a strange one because they certainly should have taken care of them. Hopefully they will bounce back tonight against a oh, tough a, Danvers team. What a jump. Let me recognize some of the freshman cheerleaders, Mark. Absolutely. Uh, you got... Nettie Ringler, uh, it is a third down and nine for Revere, just underway in the second half. In motion is number seven, John Murphy. Ball comes back to Pedro. Pedro looking for Murphy, hits him, but he is knocked out of bounds by number one, Luke Cody, short of the first down. Like you said, Mark, Cody's all over the field tonight. That was a nice stop. He had some, the receiver had some room, it just didn't turn it up fast enough. He's playing some great ball. It's going to be a fourth down, and it looks to be a short seven for the fourth Patriots. For I think this will be the first punt of the night, Mark. If, in fact, they're going to. Bascon in along with Luke Cody, and at least they're setting up not to punt. Up to the top of the screen, number 11, Badar Howe, on a fourth down and seven. Barking out the signals is Boudreau. Boudreau looking. Hang on a nice pass. He's got him. He's got the first down. Number 22, Zach Furlong, brought down by Cotaspati, along with Bascon, but not before. Furlong runs a furlong and gets a first down for Revere and keeps this drive going for the Patriots. Furlong for Furlong. I like that furlong one, Mark. Furlong for Furlong. I got to give the... Uh, the Patriots coach, a lot of credit there going on fourth 
down on long, and that's a, that could be a game changer here. Mark. Ball on the 29th, Revere. First down and 10, ball is on the 29 yard line for Revere. Up to the top of the screen, number seven, John Murphy. To the bottom, number 11 is Badar Howe. Calling out the signals is Boudreaux. In motion, number 22, Zach Furlong. And being brought down, number 24, Darius McNeil. Being brought down and helped up by number 34, Dom Cotaspati. Cotaspati also roaming a lot of real estate tonight for the Big Blue. Has all year. The Wolf has been playing great. And Swampscott's been relatively healthy this year, Mark. So far, so good. I should be knocking on wood, and I will. So far, so good. So the Patriots lose a yard on that McNeil carry. It'll be second down and 11. Ten minutes left to go in the half. Big blue up, seven to nothing. Revere breaking the huddle. The bottom of the screen, number 11 is Badar Howe on a second and 11. Pitch out comes quickly to number 23 on the play, Lucas Barbosa. Barbosa being railroaded out by number four for the big blue, Dylan January, along with number 35. One, two, three, four, Connor five, Rich. five Swamp Scott kids getting up off that pile off the uh, sidelines. They were really, really forcing it around that corner. This will be a third down and nine for Revere. Ball is on third the 27, 28 yard line. Yard line. On the 28-yard line as Boudreau comes in with the play. You've got to be playing for four downs here if you're Swampscott's defense, uh, seeing how they went for it oh, absolutely. already off their own 45. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Swampscott's 45. In the backfield is number 19, Calvin Boudreau, excuse me, Boudreau from the shotgun, along with number 23, Luke Barbosa. On a pass, he's got him. There's the wolf over there again. It was a, uh, there was a stunt in the middle, Mark. I don't know if you saw the stunt in the middle. Just couldn't get penetration. The completion to John Murphy brings it down to about fourth and a short two for... Stay in on that last tackle for Swampscott. For the Patriots. Ball is on the 21-yard line. Again, Revere knocking on the door, Mike. Absolutely. I mean, they, they've been moving the ball pretty steadily, Mark. I'd have to venture a guess that uh, Revere has... More yards than Swamp Scott, but they're still behind on the, on the scoreboard. Revere breaking the huddle on a fourth down and two. Boudreaux direct behind center. Comes back to pass, looking, picks it up, throws it in the air, and it is incomplete, broken up on a nice defensive play by number 24 for the Big Blue, Russ Hopkins, intended for number 27. Quarterback had some pressure, Mark, and had to throw that off his back foot, and that's why it floated on him and left some air under it. That's why Hopkins was able to cover so nicely. And there. let me tell you, he had two guys to cover, too. He had Murphy along with number 23, Luke Barbosa, and uh, ended up sort of rattling the cage just enough for that to go in. Well, and Boudreaux had a guy in his face, too, so that, helped, that makes you throw off your back foot. First down and 10, big blue ball on the 21 yard line. Coming through on a crack, number seven for the big blue is Isaiah Bascon. Close to a first down and they do move the chains and it is first down for the big blue. Let's see if Swampscott can pound, pound this a little bit for the next five, six minutes and put it in the end zone. Their, their defense needs a rest, rest mark. Absolutely. Let's we'll see if they can run the game again. Got trips, trips low. Bottom of your screen is number two, Emmanuel Tashawa, along with number three, Jonathan Ariaki, on a first down in 10. Ball is handed off to Bascon, being crushed down by number 50 for Revere. Vito Grillo, a gain of about two and a half or so. We'll call That's it a fine. second down and a short eight. It looks like Colin Walsh blue. was split as one of the trips down there too, number 13. And he was open, Mark. If, if, I'm, the, if I'm the offensive coordinator here, I'm going to run that play again later tonight because that, that was an opening there. Bringing him out is Jake Bartram on a second down and seven. Again, Tashawa Ariaki at the bottom of the screen. Up top is the J-Mac. Barking out the signals is Frary. Lone back is Bascon. Looking as Frary ducks. He takes it off and runs. 
still on his feet, brought down at about the 40 yard line. We'll bring up a third down and a short two, brought down on the play by number 11, Badar Howe. Ferry showed some nice mobility there, and sometimes, Mark, the best mobility is just standing Ferry still. That's what he did. He just stood still, hesitated for a second, Third then took off when he had the opportunity. You can see the field. Yeah, well, absolutely. That's the whole thing, and that's exactly yeah. what Tom Brady did. makes a living out of just standing still. This is a long yard to gain for the Big Blue at the seven-minute mark. Big play here. In the backfield is Bascon. Ball is square at their own 40-yard line. Revere's jamming the line. Another play coming in, most likely inaudible. We'll see exactly what Freire does. And a timeout. I like what Revere did there, Mark. I like what Revere did. They had one back, Swampscott had one back. They, they were keying on him. They jammed the line and it caused Swampscott to either call, start to call, call an audible, it wasn't there, and then they had to call a timeout. Like I said, I wanted to recognize the Swampscott Shaley is doing a great job tonight. The, uh, the freshman, uh, Nitty Ringler, Emily Kruger, Sabrina Andrews, and Emma Domenesis. The sophomores, Abby Benevento, Abby Giardino, Lily Giardino, Isabel Lanzelli, Alexa Mignon, and Meg Badinelli. Congratulations, girls. Keep it up. Great job. And we got Tom Petty on the box here. Oh, boy. A great, great, unbelievable loss, Tom Petty. We're going to send this one out to Lord Sutherland, a big Tom Petty fan. Woo! Yes, sir! <laughs> Big oh, the Patriot the is going crazy down there. Big Blue Blake the Huddle on a third down and one. Just under seven to go. Ball is off to Bascon. Bascon's got the first down and more. Hold on to the ball. There we go. Great run. Nice hard run. Revere had a chance to wrap him up in the backfield and just he went through some tackles. Brought down by Frank Sims. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's a stat, Mark. There, there hasn't been a lot of yaks, yards after catch, but there's been a lot of yas, yards after hits for Swampscott tonight. First down and ten. Ball is on their own. What looks to be almost 48 yard line. Split to the bottom is the Shaw and Ariaki. Up top is the J Mac on a first and ten. Bascott in the backfield, calling out the signals as always. Colin Frary. Freire back to pass, looking, trying to find someone deep, and he's going deep and oh, just over the head boy. of number two, Emmanuel Tashawa. Number 23 on the D, Lucas Barboza. But just a pass, just a tad too far. It's a nice looking pass, just a little too high for him. He also had the Wolf inside. Uh, the Wolf came in on a nice slant route. Nice coverage for the Patriots. Absolutely, absolutely. Patriot D doing a good job on the pass tonight for Revere. Coming in with the play is Freire on a second down and 10. Ball still on their own 48 yard line. Everybody coming now up top, caught a spotty, the J-Mac along with Luke Cody on a second and 10. Freire barks out the signals, looks, and he is hammered and brought down by student body center. Whoa. of the Revere Patriots. Everybody in on that tackle for Revere, pushing the ball back and a loss for the Big Blue, basically back to their own 42 yard line. Very caught in the back. Oh. Revere was not fooled by the play action at all. There not was at a, all. There was a little play action, but he had no time at all. They brought it off. 16. Revere's One playing tough tonight, Mark. They are. Yard line. You know, and I think that win last week against Medford was really a big wake-up call to them that they can do a heck of a lot better than 0-3. Third down 16 with five left to go in this, the first half. Big Blue up 7 to nothing. Freire with the pass. Looking to go downfield, looking, stuttering, trying to get around. And he will be brought down at about the 41-yard line by number 33 on the play is the captain, Ede Bello. And that will bring up a punting situation for the Big Blue with just under five to go. And this, this game, in a funny way, Mike, is somewhat reminiscent of the Winthrop game. You know, a lot of opportunities. We ended up going in at the half 14 to nothing, but it was 70 nothing for such a long time. Most, of, most emotion I'm seeing is from the Revere coaching staff. They are very, very happy with the way their kids are playing right now. Back to field very punt excited. number 22 is Zach Furlong. Number seven, Isaiah Bascon. No, excuse me, number three, John Ariaki to do the punting. Nice snap back. 
Got the wedge set up. Oh, a beautiful kick. Punt comes quickly down to Forlong. Furlong being brought and dragged down by number 11. It looks to be Troy Levine. Very number nice 10, play excuse there. me, my error. Ethan Friedman, excuse me. And that's where they will take over. The ball will be on the 34-yard line. Furlong on a return. That Three offense, Mark, the, the Swamp's got offense is really strong. We got to see some energy there. I'd like to see them spread it out even a little more. Ball is on the 33. No, on the 27. 28-yard line. 28-yard line it is, but four to go. And this is the first half. Spread up top to the screen, number 11, Badar Howe. To the bottom is number seven, Murphy, on a first and 10. In motion comes number 23, Luke Barbosa. Ball Wrapped up nicely handball. there. Big blue defense, number four, Dylan January. And the spot, the spotty, not a spotty, a little slow to get up on the play, but not before. Two yards are gained by Revere Ball. Now on the 31 yard line, it'll be second down and eight. I don't know, uh, did Revere play on Saturday, Mark? Because Swan Scott's had a short week. That, uh, Revere played uh, last Friday. So both teams are on it. Revere played last Friday. So actually, Revere's, Revere's got a, um, a full week and Swamp Scott's losing a day. A second down and a short eight. Ball on the 31 yard line. Boudreaux barks out the signals in motion is John Murphy. Ball on a handoff and a nice play scooting around. Number 22 is nice Zach play. Furlong. And Furlong being brought down by number seven, the I-man, Isaiah Bascon. I-man wrapped him up nice, Mark. And, and if it wasn't for the I-man coming up and making that stop, it would have been another six or seven yards. Not before Furlong gets a first down and moves the chain. Ball is on their own 42-yard line as we approach the three-minute mark and this the first half. Swanscott is up seven to nothing. Glad you are with us on the Big Blue Sports Network. Mike Johnson along with Mark McHugh and Ethan Lundstadwerk bringing you all the action here from the Harry De La Russa Stadium in Revere on a first down and 10. Barking out the signals is Boudreau. Full house backfield for the Patriots. Rolling to the left is Boudreau, looking, throwing, and it is a nice comeback and a completion on the part of, we'll get his number as soon as we can. Nice timing route there, Mark. I want to say it was number 33. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I thought Incomplete. he caught it. I could have sworn that he did catch must that. Must have dropped it. it. Must have dropped it. Ida Ballo. Lights are good here, our and eyes he came are just out, bad. And he came back though, really with a great effort to try and get that ball because it was thrown just a little I, bit short. I was just saying, it, it was a nice yeah. timing pass. He came back nicely for it. The ball is incomplete. It'll be second down in 10. Ball is on the 42 yard line. Split all the way out as Badar Howe. We haven't called Riser's name. He's moving out to the he's moving up to the top now, the formation on the defense. Behind center is Boudreaux on a nice fake handoff. Oh, but nice. bang! Coming in number 34 is the Wolf, taking down number 22, Zach Furlong. Oh! Dom Cotaspotti, the Wolf coming in and making oh, the a tackle, bringing them back. Say to about the 40-yard line, a little over the 40-yard line, where it'll be third down and I'd say a long 11. I like the way I like the way Swamp Scott's defense was moving around there, Mark, and uh, they filled the gaps quick and and hit the gaps, and that's where you get the. I think that was a loss or, or no gain. Definitely a loss. Be third down and 12 on the 41, just over the 40-yard line here. Be nice to get a stop go. here. Let's go, Swamp Scott. Need a stop. Boudreaux back to pass, looking. And the ball is thrown out of bounds, incomplete. It will bring up a fourth down for the Patriots. Incomplete pass. Number 50, Quest Lacey, Mark. Did you see him? What the 12. Really, really close on the quarterback. Boudreaux had some time and he had some space and Quest Lacey really came off came off and just shut that down, made him throw it away. Great, great defensive play. Back to receive the punt is the J-Mac, Jake McIntyre. To kick it off would be Ada Ballo, number 33, on a fourth and 12, but just under two in the first half. Big Blue up seven to nothing I over think, Revere. I think McIntyre's a little too deep. Oh, no, he's moving up. Nice. Yep. 
Mack gets it on a bounce over to the 45, turns a corner to the 40 to the 50. He could go, he, he could go. go all the way. There goes J Mack, but they say oh. he's stepping out of bounds. Stepping out of bounds at the 44, 43 yard line. But you know he can fly. Fearless J Mack, take it back, baby. Almost. <laughs> Almost. So I'm tipping, tipping the. Uh, Tiptoeing down the line, Mark just couldn't keep his feet in. Out of bounds at the 44 yard line. First Big Bull will take up 44 yard line. I like line. the fact that I was looking at where McIntyre's position was, line. Mark, and I thought he was a little too deep. And he came up about five yards and, and he got it on the first bounce, which was super. Up to the top of your screen, number 13, Colin Walsh, along with McIntyre to the bottom, is number three, Ariaki to Charlotte, number two, in motion is Ariaki coming to the right. <clears throat> Frary looking, has Baskin, Baskin crosses over, plows oh, through, down no, to about the 30-yard no, no, line. No, 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 no. I, I, I got a flag, yeah, I got a flag. I think he got him in the back or as a hold. Too bad. Nice screen pass. It was set up nicely. No need for the... Holding yeah. against Schwab Scott. So Too this bad, will be Mark, coming back on the Big Blue. Too bad, Mark. Uh, Big Blue had that set up nicely. Uh, nice, clean pass, and they just couldn't... Uh, couldn't turn it without getting the hold. So the ball comes back to the 40, 44 yard line, where again, we will beat the first down. Bartram breaks the huddle on a first and 10. Walsh and McIntyre are up top. Ariaki Tashawa on the bottom. In motion is Ariaki. Looking back to pass is Frary. Frary over the top and just off the fingertips of Tashawa. Would have picked up a lot of it's real estate on that one. Second Would have been a first down. Back. And I got to tell you, there was borderline pa uh, rough in the pass there, Mark. When you when you watch that in real time, the ball was gone and uh, Revere still bared down on the quarterback and put him to the ground. It will be a second down and 10 on the 44 yard line of Revere. We're under the minute mark now, 56 seconds left to go in this, the first half. Huge play here for both teams going into the going into halftime. Swamp's got to be great to be able to pick up a first here. In the backfield is Bascon. Frary calling the shots on a second and 10. There Back it is. Back to pass, looking. Has number two in the sights is Tashawa. Tashawa brings it up. It looks like he's close to the first down. We'll see where the spot is. The shower on the reception. I love that play in high school football. The receiver comes out, takes a step forward, takes a step back, and uh, it's all timing. He delivered the ball nicely. it will be a timeout by the Big Blue. We will go around the horn tonight, Mike. Some games of importance. Undefeated Classical at Somerville. That should be a dandy. The Salem Witches, the Broom Riders, come into Manning Field and take on the undefeated Bulldogs. That's two teams that are undefeated over in Lynn. Lynn Tech, by the way, also undefeated. Winthrop will go to Stackpole Field to take on the Saga Sachems and the Fishermen come in to take on the Magicians tonight at seven over in Marblehead. Austin Prep comes to Fenwick at seven. Undefeated Linfield is up in the seafood town of Itzwich. Peabody at Malden at seven. St. Mary's playing the Archies, Archbishop Williams at six. And of course, High Mass is being held over at BC High as St. John's invades the Eagles, Malden Catholic at Zavarian. Medford is That's at Everett. That's a heck of a game too, Malden Catholic. Let me Catholic. tell you, you gotta see this Everett backfield. Oh, I They're bet. They're absolutely fabulous. It's year after year, Everett puts out a fantastic product in that Division I program. In the game of importance tomorrow, Danvers goes over to Hurd Stadium to play the Beverly Panthers. It is a first down and 10 for Swanscott. Frary looking to the side to get some direction. Number one, Luke Cody at the bottom, along with number two, Tashawa. In the backfield is the I-man, Bascon, on a first down and 10. Back to pass is Frary, looking, has number two out of bounds, Emmanuel Tashawa. Short of the first down, but stops the clock. Ball will be placed at about the 27-yard line of, at the 27-yard line of Revere, where it will Checking be second down shot. and a short five for the Big Blue as they try and punch one in here with 44 seconds left to go in this, the first half. Cameron seems to be opening up a little more. He's, fa he's faced with a short clock here in a short field, so let's see what they can do. Back to pass is Frary. Frary looking, going deep. 
He's got Bascon just over the head in pursuit. On a nice defensive play, number six, James Kiosis. And it will be a third down and five with 37 seconds left to go in this, the first half. Tell Good. you what, Mark, Bascon did a heck of a job trying to adjust to that ball. It was up in the air. Uh, Ferry threw a nice ball. He just had the wrong side of him, and, and Bascon just couldn't adjust fast enough. It was a little, little too high. We'll see if the big blue can punch this one in. Oh, hey there. Frizzoli's got a heck of a leg, Mark. He, he can, he, I've seen that kid. He could be inside. He could hit one from a 40, from 40. In the backfield, number four, Dylan January. Calling out the signals is Frary. Frary back to pass, looking, trying to get it over the middle. Oh, He's got something play going call. with January. January knifing through, still on his feet. Looks as though he's got the first down and more. As Should be a timeout here for Swamp Scott after the chains move. And it will be a first January down and 10. Second. And there is a timeout on the field. Timeout for Swamp Scott. Numbers, January. Love the play call on there, Mark. Sucked him in. If, if you saw, when, when you watch this, when you're watching the game live, they sucked in the Revere Patriots. There's four guys sitting in the backfield, so the, the linemen did a good job of just giving them enough tension and then let them release, and then you had a great screen go up the middle. First down and 10 balls on the 19-yard line. Bartram leads them out to the bottom of the screen is Tashawa, along with number one, Luke Cody. In the backfield is January, and in motion is the J-Mac. Back to pass, and there he is, is number one, knifing through, bringing it down is Luke Cody. Another first down and a fumble on the ball. Rivera is saying they've got it. We'll see I don't what think the call so. Is. I don't think so. I think it was called down, Mark, or there was a whistle. And uh, the big blue retained possession oh, ball yeah. will be on the five yard line. First and goal with 18 seconds left to go on the big blue. Huge drive here for Swamp Scots. They, they've looked very sharp this drive. Revere's uh, keeping them out. There's been some big plays that Swamp Scots tried to connect on. They just haven't been able to click. I notice Rowan Pierre, number 74, with a little bit of a hitch and a limp. We hope that he's okay for the Patriots. Everybody gathered around the coaches now. This is an important 18 seconds in this game. I'd like to see Swampscott try to run the ball outside, Mark, here. I think Revere's trying to bottle him up, especially with only five to go into the end zone. Love to see something play action in the front, maybe have Ferry roll out. On this play, if they're going to do a running pass or a running game, I'll tell you, it's up to the snow plows. Uh, Tyler Lacey along with uh, Noah Carrero. Get it. I mean, that's... We've got a first down and goal your from strength, the five. Your strengths is are those tackle positions. So if they can run it a little off tackle and have a... January is in the backfield on the first and five. Jay Mack up top along with number three, Oriaki. And number two to share a split let's see left. What, let's see what that big line can do right here. Could be the Ferry takes it himself. Handoff goes to January. Touchdown, yep. Swampscott! Yes, sir! Kevin January on a five yard run at the 11 second mark. And just like that, the Big Blue, and just like the Winthrop game, they're going in with a two touchdown spot. And just what we're looking at, I was looking at that formation, Mark, and Swampscott played to its strength. They've got the, the big offensive guards, the offensive tackles, play it off guard, off tackle, and run it right in. Love the play calling, coach. Number seven, Tommy Frizzoli in for the extra point. To hold is number five, Colin Frary. There's a snap, ball is down, kick is up, and it is no good. It's wide to the left, just a shade wide no to the left. So Frizzoli's no kick goes just errant to the left. No and with the 11 second mark here in the first half, it is the Big Blue 13 and Revere nothing. Great, great drive to, to uh, go in at halftime. Hopefully they can hold them on the kickoff, but that's a huge drive by Swanson. Let me tell you, didn't they work the clock well or what? It really did. A couple timing passes, Ferry looks sharp. Boy, I just love that touchdown run, love it. The formation was right. And the snowplows did their job, opened up everything. Right. Coach is now going down back to the second half, getting ready. It is the Big Blue 13, 
and Revere nothing. 11 seconds left to go. Getting ready to kick it off is number eight, Tommy Fazzoli. Getting ready to receive it, number 23 for the Revere's is Lucas Barboza, along with number 22, Zach Furlong. A welcome touchdown and a good feeling going in on the half. Revere, Revere has showed up and has uh, acquitted themselves very well tonight. So there's a scribbler falling down on the ball. Oh, is clock. Revere being told by number 24 to stay down? Darius McNeil is telling him to stay down and... Somehow the clock didn't move on that. Up, I don't and the clock exactly. didn't move. I believe it was Matt Brido. Home field advantage, I guess. But Matt. I couldn't be sure who ended First up... First and 10 ball. for Revere from their own 33 yard line. Revere has it first and 10 on their own 33. We haven't really seen Boudreaux try to air it out too much. Uh, he's, uh, he's a young freshman quarterback. I wonder if they'll just take a knee and bring it in the locker he's room. He's got a lot of style. Yep. There's something about him. I like, his, I, I, I like where he comes from. He's got a good arm, and he could very well just take a knee here. Yeah, and he, he does. does. And that will do it for the first half. At the end of the first half, it is Swampscott 13 and Revere nothing. Swampscott hit gold. The 8.33 mark in That's the first the period on a 30-yard pass Walk to McIntyre from no. Colin Frary. And then just now, with 11 seconds left to go at the 11-second mark of the second, January busts through for five yards. And that's what she wrote here at the end of one. It is Swampscott 13, Revere nothing. Keep it right here for all the second-half action on the Big Blue Sports Network. Coming up right at you. Thanks, Mark. Welcome back to second half action here at the Harry De La Russa Stadium. The Big Blue up 13 to nothing on touchdowns by Jake McIntyre in the first period, a 30 yard pass from Frary, along with the second period touchdown at 11 seconds to go, Dylan January. And hey, let's just kick back for a second in memory. Let's listen to Tom Petty. Absolutely. Great tribute here. Take it away, Mark. You can do. <laughs> no way could I touch this guy. This guy was a bona fide star. What a and shame. A, what a shame. Just unbelievable. Just come off a fabulous tour. He sounded great, looked great. Filling I can, stadiums. I can remember that incredible super group with Tom Petty, George Harrison of the Beatles, Bob Dylan, Jeff Lynn of Electric Wagon Orchestra, Roy Orbison. They put out that album in the late 80s. It was an absolute showstopper. Number one for nine weeks on the Billboard charts. The Wilburys, traveling Wilburys, right? Terrific, terrific group. They each had a nickname. I forget what Tom Petty was. Oh, played. yeah, yeah. And the drummer was called, uh, uh, the drummer was Wilbur Sideberry. He wasn't a real <laughs> Wilbury. He's a side man. Side so he's Wilbur Sideberry. Oh, no, it was a, just a terrific concept. We're getting ready for the second half action here. The Big Blue will be kicking it off to the Patriots. There are 11 minutes of third period action. Next week, by the way, keep it on the Big Blue Sports Network. Coming to town will be the Saga Sachems on the 21st of October. It will be a 12 o'clock start from the Athletic Complex at Bloxage Field. Just about ready to go here. Number 23, Luke Barbosa back along with number 22, Zach Furlong. Number eight, Tom Frizzoli will be kicking it off. We'll see if the Big Blue can add to an already 13 to nothing lead. Well, Certainly Coach Serino, Revere looking to get back into this ball game, Mike. Coach Serino and uh, Coach, Coach Bush is the defensive coordinator. He can't, can't, be do, can't be better than that, Mark, when you put a, Z, put a zero on the board. Here comes Rizzoli's kick. Squibber picked and downed immediately. Caught by number 25, I believe. I believe it was 25. Yes, Lennon Sarita on the grab. Mark, it Mark, will be that, that boy just Revere. saved his team about 30 yards. Fazuli hit that thing on a line. It was a bullet. He just put his hands up, cradled the ball, and went to the ground at the 32. That was a heck of a play. Without number 35. Ball, that was a fantastic football play right there. It was number 25, excuse me, Lennon Sarita. What a play. Ball is on the 32-yard line, first down and 10 for the Patriots. In 
motion on a handoff. Being brought down is number 24 on the play, Darius McNeil. And in on the tackle for the big blue, number 33. Well, Swampscott came out in that first half, Mark. I think they scored in their first Here, possession. On the tackle got, uh, got a bit stagnant, but then came back at a big time in the game and, and jammed it in for that second score. Alex Sheehan on the tackle will get a second down and five just underway here in the third period, second half action. Boudreaux coming in with the play from the sidelines. Revere had a number of chances first half. Uh, some penalties ended up basically putting them out of the mix or they could have split, had some points on the board. Split black backs here on the backfield, Mark. Second down and five, Boudreaux on a handoff going to be brought down. Number 22, Zach Furlong goes nowhere, being brought down by number 40, Nick Riser, on a loss on the Furlong. play to bring up a third down and Run about down seven, third and eight. Not, not, we yeah. have not called Riser's name a lot, but when we have, it's been a big play, it's Mark. It's been very important. Most of the time, he's in on quality plays. Yep. I could have picked up yeah. out of the game, being replaced by number 70. Six, Andy Rosa on a third down and seven. So you get caught a spot in and Riser stunting around. They just switch positions in the uh, in the mid linebacking core. Hopkins, Baskin, deep. Looking back is Boudreau. Boudreau hits number 22 on the play. Zach Furlong, but brought down by Riser again. And this will bring up a fourth down. Furlong on the reception. I want to say a fourth and a short five, or a five. Fourth and on five the for Revere. And we'll Great defensive what... stand for Swampscott. They came out, came out fast and hard, Mark, and stopped these guys, forced them to punt. Great series defensively from uh, Coach Bush. Eddie Ballo will be kicking it off. Back is number 14, Jake McIntyre. Uh, get away ball from coming it. coming down, and the ball takes a bounce. And it is down at about the 35 yard line. I think Jake's just a little too far back, Mark. I mentioned that in the first part. I think he's just a little too far back. Uh, that ball was up in the up first in the air a little bit and just floated. And he just couldn't get to it without taking a chance. Line. Zach Furlong makes a stop on the ball. The Big Blue have it first down and 10 on their own. 36, eight and a half. Left to go in the third period. Big Blue up 13 to nothing. Glad you are with us on the Big Blue Sports Network. In the backfield is Bascon. In motion, number one is Luke Cody on a first and 10. Handoff goes to Bascon. Bascon nice through, drags one, two, almost three tacklers down to about the 40, 41 yard line. Brought down by number 22, Zach Fullon. On the carry. Kios is in on the tackle for Rivera. So Bascon picks up a neat five on that. It'll be a second down and five for the Big Blue. Nice hard run. We'll see if Swampscott keeps trying to jam it up the middle, Mark. Swampscott's big with that line. They should be able to move these guys off the ball. Coding to shower the bottom of your screen. Bascon in the backfield. Up top is the J-Mac on a second down and five. Looking, he's got number one, Luke Cody. Cody's got the first down and more. Driven out of bounds is Cody by number 22, Zach Furlong, along with number six, Jim Kaosis. It will be a first down big blue. Coach Cameron's trying to spread it out a little bit, which will be good. That play was good for first down for Swamp Squad at the Revere. Big Blue have the ball on the 49 yard line of the Revere Patriots, first down and 10. Ball off to Bascon, nice through. Looks like a good five yard carry by Bascon, brought down on the play by number five, Matt Stacio along with number 50 on the play, Vito Grillo also Revere. on the stop. It looked like, it looked like two and, uh, and 20 from the uh, Revere team were mixing up, two from Swampscott uh, to Shawa was mixing up downfield. Could have been a flag on either boy. Everybody up top caught a spotty along with McIntyre 
on the bottom is Tashawa on a second down and five in the backfield is Bascon. A little bit of movement, but no flag. A nice strike on the part of Frary to number two, Emmanuel Tashawa. And that will be a first down, and those chains just keep on moving. Big Blue look like they're in good shape here on this drive. Got to tell you, Mark, there was some movement on the, uh, on the line, moved. and they get away with it. No, Mas Bascon moved without a doubt. It was I think the line moved, too. Every, they were moving fast. First down and 10, Big Blue ball on the Patriot 36. Closing in on six and a half left to go in the third period. Swanscott up 13 to nothing. Bartram breaks the huddle. To the top is Kata Spotty and McIntyre to the bottom, number two, Tashawa. Trips on top again. Barking out the signals is Frary. Frary hands off to Bascon, smashing through. And Bascon bringing it down to about the 27 Bascon yard line. Work, work those guards and tackles. Swamp's got to open in some holes on the front line now, it's nice. Brought it all the way second down, it becomes and second and one. a short one for the Big Blue. And from what I can gather, there's plenty of Bascons to come up. This uh, third, third, fourth grader, Noah Bascon, is supposed to be the athlete of the family. <laughs> <laughs> second down and a short one for the Big Blue. McIntyre and Kavaspati up top to the bottom is Tashawa. In motion is Cody. Ball back to Bascon, smashing through, smashing through. He's just like a workhorse tonight, brought down at about the 25-yard line. Bascon taking issue, looked like maybe he got horse collared on the play. Nice hard run, but they're, they're working in the middle. Swampscott's getting off the ball. The O-line is getting off the ball nicely, and they're pushing Revere right off the ball, Mark. I'd like to see Swampscott just keep pushing it down Revere's throat right now. Beat them off the line, beat them off the line, see if they can just run it That's right in. That's what's working, it's not broken, so go with it. On a first down and 10, ball is on the Revere Patriots 14 yard line with about five left to go in the third. Ariaki now splits to the right along with Cody and McIntyre. Frary handing off again to Bascon. Bascon smashes through, gets maybe one, maybe two. Brought down on the play by number five, Matt Stasio. Sticking with the run right now, Mark. I like I like the play calling right now. Conservative, but you get a 13-point lead. You're halfway through, you're more than halfway through the uh, third quarter. So just keep jamming that ball. So they call it a no gain. It is second down and ten. Ball still on Let, the 14-yard line. Let's see if they use some play action now, Mark, and go. Uh, they've been tripped It'll be wide. a good time for it. Yeah. Actually, this is the first time. Yep. Let's see what they do out of the backfield with the back there. Still in January in the backfield in motion is Luke Cody. Looking. They end up finding January. January trying to get around, but can't. Brought down on the play on a nice tackle by number 33 for the Patriots, Eddie Bello. No gain there if, if not, he lost a yard. You know, if anything, he did lose a yard. It's going to be third down and 11 for the Big Blue, which brings it back to the 15-yard line, what I would think would be... Definitely uh, in Fazoli's range if you have to kick. I'd like to see it if, in fact, yep. it's... It's on the it's left hash. It's on the left hash. It's a good kick for him. January still in the backfield. See if they can use the short field here. And 11 for the big blue. Fake to January. Going Got deep him. and all alone is number two. Tashawa Emanuel. Tashawa touchdown. Swampscott. Yes, sir. A 15-yard pass from Ferry to Tashawa. And it puts the big blue up by three touchdowns. 19 to nothing at the three at the 308 mark. Mark, on the head fake, Freire really froze the defensive back coming out of the backfield. He had a nice head fake, froze the back, and that was a great catch. I'd like to see that on tape because seeing it live, I don't think it does it justice. It was a nice hands catch. He had to pull it in. He was in the back of the end zone. Keep his feet. A lot of concentration, a lot of focus that went into that, that passing catch. He got behind Luke Barbosa on that one. 
This time the kick Extra is right through the uprights, and good. the Big Blue go up by three touchdowns. It is the Big Blue 20, and no revere score. nothing at the 3.08 mark. And that was, he threaded the needle beautifully on that one. Oh, the catch, the catch, I, I can't wait to see that on tape because I think the catch, the focus to bring that ball in, it was a hands catch. He had to really focus on it, and he had to hold the, hold the line as well. To the strains of cream and sunshine of your love, the Big Blue find themselves up 20 to nothing here at the Harry De La Russa Stadium. Glad you are with us on the Big Blue Sports Network. Mark McHugh along with Ethan Runstadler and Mike M.J. Johnson returning back from the southern reaches of Tampa, Florida. How'd you find it down there, Mike? Tampa was wonderful, Mark. I can see myself moving down there when I get a little older. <laughs> But we, we ended up spending some time down in Clearwater. There was a storm in the uh, Gulf, so I had a great time uh, surfing some waves. Back to receive is Jonathan Murphy, number seven, along with number 22, Zach Furlong. Frizzoli getting set to kick it off. And again, another grounder. And again, picked up by number 35, uh, excuse me, number 33, See, who did get that? No, it was number 25. My mistake. Again? Number 25 is Again, Leonard. a nice play. Sarita. And that one, I'll tell you, though, Mike, I would disagree with you on the fact that it saved something there. I think he should have picked up the ball and ran with it. Maybe. But you know, still, he, he, has to, he has to make that play clean. Otherwise, it's a free ball, and Swartz can Henry jump on it. Own, I'd like to see Frizzoli kick it a little line. further down the field, because that's the second time in a row. Now, Mark, didn't you write songs for Cream at one point? At one time, yes. Yes, they were all turned down, however. No. <laughs> First down and 10 balls on the 33-yard line. Looks like we've got a digit out on the scoreboard. Handoff comes to number 24, Darius McNeil. McNeil, McNeil brought down by Gary. number 24 on the play, Russ Hopkins. And McNeil gets about a good Hopkins, five, four to five line. yards. Oh. It'll be second down oh. and a long five. Mc, McNeil Patriots. came up a little bit limp on that. I don't know. He's not limp. I don't know if it was his shoulder or what's going on, but he got some kind of a stinger. Swampscott covered that nicely, Mark. He had some room on the outside, and uh, Swampscott, Big Blue, came up fast and uh, shut that down. Second down and a long five for the Big Blue. Just approaching two minutes and a half left to go in the third. Big Blue up 20 to nothing. Boudreau calling out the shots here. In motion is number 22, Zach Furlong. Give me a short uh, third and three now, Mark. Handoff to number 24, Darius McNeil, brought down by Ethan Friedman. And it will be, Ranger looks to be no game. And they uh, look like they're going to be marching off some real estate on the Big Blue, which will bring the ball very, very close to Offside the... against Schwarzbutt. That'll be an automatic first down for Remix. First down for the Patriots. <clears throat> Swampscott has employed a uh, bend, do not break defense tonight. Revere has moved the ball decently at times. Ball is on the 43 yard line, first down and 10. Under the two minute mark here, up to the top of your screen is number 11, Troy Levine. On to the bottom, number 22, Zach Marks. Oh, excuse me. Number 11 was Bedar House. Oh, yeah, all mistake. over it, all over him. All over him. Show him a little bit of real estate here. Murphy on the reception. They had four guys tackling him. I pushed him back. I think there's going to be a loss of the play. In on that tackle, the swamp shot. Approaching the one minute mark here in the third period. Fast quarter, Second huh? Down and 10. It's a fast game. Yes, it is. First period just took, the first half took an hour. I, I like the way the linebackers for Swampscott are filling right now. They see, they're seeing the plays, they know what Revere's trying to do, and they're all on top of them fast. Revere breaks the huddle to the bottom of the screen, comes number seven, John Murphy. Bad our how up top. In motion on a pitch comes number 22, Zach Furlong, but Furlong is met. And the bat by number 16, Graham Inzana. And it will be a third down and about seven yards to go. Inzana came up and then caught a spot. He finished him off. 
cost Buddy threw off a block and got, got to him as well and helped him Zana finish it off, Mark. Third down, six for the Patriots. I really have enjoyed the music tonight, though, at uh, the Revere Stadium. Some, good, good, some good selections here in Revere at the Harry De La Russa tonight. Want, yeah. This one is going to wind down here. And this will be it for the third period. At the end of three, it is Swampscott 20 and Revere nothing. Touchdown briefly, first quarter. period at the 833 mark. McIntyre catches a 30-yard pass from Colin Frary. And with 11 seconds left to go in the second, January busts in for five yards. We come back to the third period, a 15-yard pass from Frary to Chishawa. And that's where we stand now at 20 to nothing as we get set for fourth period action. Just a reminder too, next week, Saugus comes to town, the Sachems, not having a great season, but nonetheless, every time Saugus and Swampscott get together, it's always a battle royal. Well, all these games are dangerous. And as every football coach will tell you, and every football player worth his salt will tell you, the only game that matters is the next one. It's not the one you just won or lost. It's not the game two, two weeks away. It's the next one. Let me just recognize, oh, the Swampscott cheerleaders are out again doing a great job with this music, Mark. Let me recognize the juniors. Hannah Vernova, Parker Leone, Jordan Sullivan, Abby Hopper. Way to go, girls. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> and while we're at it, why don't we recognize the senior captains, Olivia Alpern, Emma Benevento, and Sophie Stern. Revere picks up at the fourth down. It will be third down and a long six on the 47-yard line. Back to pass is Bedreau. Bedreau looking, trying to find number seven. And he gets John Murphy, but clobbered by Ethan Friedman. Murphy on the reception. Friedman just racking him up, showing him a little bit of the Harry Dilla Russell Friedman turf on that one. Man, he, he closed point. fast. That kid was open. Ethan Friedman came out of nowhere and closed Nothing fast, closed it down. Here. Gotta tell you, the one thing I'm missing right now is those meatball subs that were thrown out here. <laughs> for the Revere for the Revere folks. Where's my meatball sub, Mark? What do you think? And when you're in Revere, it's gotta be good, it's right? It's the best meatball sub going when you come over. Well, here. I don't know. Maybe East Boston would argue with you about that. Number 33 is Ida Ballo is going to be punting. Ah, McIntyre is back. This goes out of bounds. Too bad. Big Blue will get the ball roughly at about the 30, 36-yard line where they will set up shop at the 10-minute mark. I look forward to seeing McIntyre return the kicks, Mark, and when it goes out of bounds, it's a disappointment for well, me. Well, McIntyre is a known commodity. Would you kick to him? The, uh, no. No, well, there you go. A lot of energy I mean, you know, on two you legs, get a man. Of, you fast can get a little and... bit of mileage out of that punt without getting into McIntyre's hands or Baskin's hands right. you know, or whatever. You know, it's uh, Why not try and drive it out? If you get it into his hands, you know what McIntyre can do. Revere's <laughs> gotta, Revere has to do something here. they got to go. they got to force Swamp's got three and out, or this game's getting tough for them. Baskin's in the backfield on a first and ten from the 36. In motion is McIntyre. Ball is pitched out to Bascon going left. See if he can turn the corner. He's got some speed. Still on his feet. Should have been racked up. Uh, Celsus ended up getting him and bringing him out of bounds, but Bascon ended up dragging him for a few extra yards. Yeah, Revere be... did a nice job. That would have been a loss if uh, the I-man wasn't as strong as he was. Yeah. And even, even then, it may, might have been a yard, but boy. That's he... all he got. Yeah. That's all he got. Should have been second nine, down and nine. nine. But... Ball is, uh, Who's in the backfield, Mark? I can't tell. Is Bascon's that January? Bascon's in the backfield on a second and nine. Bascot brought down by number, I think it's number 55, on the play, Frank Sims. Revere, Revere has done a decent job tonight filling in the middle. Swampscott hasn't had that much up the middle. And I'm a little bit surprised just because of the big line. But Swamp's got a lot of these kids that play in both ways, so maybe it's uh, they're a little tired. Third and nine for Swamp's got. Third down nine for the big blue ball is on the 36, 37. It's still on the 36, so it's really not much here. So uh, I all the feel it's a passing situation all, for the all, big blue. All the pressure's on uh, Revere right now. They need a stop here, Mark. This game gets away from them if Swamp's got can't Swamp's got uh, scores. It's, and on this, it's downs. The party could be over. In motion is number three, Ariaki. 
Back to pass is Frary, looking. And I'll tell you, McIntyre was wide open. He was. He beat his man. I just don't think that uh, Frary <coughs> had enough time. Him. The pocket started to break down. He probably had three or four seconds, but then the pocket started to break down. He just couldn't step into that throw to McIntyre. So the Revere Patriots do what they had to. They hold the big blue with 9-11 left to go in the game. Back to do the punting for Swam Scott, number three, John Ariaki. And to receive the punt would be number 22, Zach Furlong. Well, actually, Furlong's had a great game for the Patriots tonight. He's man of the match for me right now for, for Revere. Snap is back, Ariaki. It's sort of an end over end. Up in the air, takes a bounce. It takes a Revere bounce. And Cover it. bouncing and finally is stopped by number 16, Graham Inzana. But not before Revere sets up shop with good field position on the 46-47 yard line with about under nine to go in the game. Dangerous punt there uh, for Swamp Scott. The, the, uh, they didn't cover it as fast as they could. I'm sorry, dangerous punt there for Revere because it was so high. I think a couple of the kids lost in the lights, and that could have deflected off of somebody and been a loose ball. First down then, Paul, on the 47-yard line for Revere. Nice crowd here tonight, too, at the Harry Della Russa. Great place to come and watch a game. Be better if I had a meatball sub. <laughs> Ball was handed off and still on his feet, grinding on a great run by number 24, Darius McNeil, carrying half of the Swanscott team McNeil with him, brought down by carry. number four, Dylan January, but not before McNeil, a workhorse on that play, gets a first down for the Patriots. I think McNeil, McNeil's weighing in at about 145 pounds, too, and he carried some big boys from Swanscott. He's got a lot Quite of speed, and he's, he's like a horse when he gets going. Wow. Ball on the 41-yard line. It is first down and 10, Patriots. I'd like to see Revere get in and out of the huddle a little quick, quicker, Mark. The, the clock is against them right now. they got to show some urgency. McNeil in the background on the first, uh, backfield on the first and 10. Ball is handed off to McNeil, powering through again. Nice through. Looks like he's got about a seven-yard lead. on the carry. McNeil is brought down on the play by number 40, Nicky Reiser. You know, unless Swampscott's just content, Mark, to let them run the ball and get some get some short, short yardage gains. McNeil, second and four for Revere at the Swampscott 35 yard line. Here come the Patriots on a second and four, under eight to go in the game. Split to the bottom of your screen, number 11, Bader Howe. Ball is handed off to McNeil again. We've got a flag on a play. And the flag I would say on the that play. there could have been a little motion on the part of the Revere Patriots. This one's coming back. McNeil's warming up. Any, any great back Still will tell the you that they don't get they don't get warm and they don't start feeling the game until they get at least ten carries. Well, again, Mark Revere, uh, they start moving the ball. They did this in the first half. They had some they had some uh, momentum going, and then they just got beat back with a couple penalties. That'll make it second and nine. Ball gets busted back on the Patriots. It'll be second down and nine with seven and a half left to go in this one. Big blue up and in a big way, 20 to nothing. The texts are flying fast and furious, MJ. I don't want to focus on the meatball subs, but <laughs> we're able to still call the game here, and I haven't heard much on the... Uh, on the PA system since those Second down the nine, Patriot ball on the big blue 40 yard line. Back to pass is Bedreau, looking, trying to spurt the needle. He's Ooh. brought down. We'll see if there's a flag, and that's uh, a face mask I on the big did blue. Did you see it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's a face mask on Swan Scott. There's a flag on the inadvertent, plate. Inadvertent, but a face mask nonetheless. And that will mark some real estate off on the big blue and definitely give him the first down. We have a face mask against Swan Scott. Revere has to really get, like I was saying, Mark, Revere really has to get in and out of the huddle a little faster now. They're under seven minutes. They're down three scores. They need to move the ball fast. Ball is brought to the 25-yard line. Bottom line, Mike, they need to get in the end zone. Right now. Yeah. Right now. I mean, they just have to get into the end zone. That will be a first down for Revere at the swap spot. 25 so far, the big blue, line. when they've had to, they've played shutdown D. I'm sure Coach Serena would like to see that zero stay up on the board, too. 
First and 10 ball on the 25 yard line. Boudreaux looking, turning, and it slips out of his hand. Incomplete pass. I can't Second tell, Mark, if it slipped out of his hands or he made, a, he made a conscious decision to it, throw it, it on the ground because that play was going it's nowhere. Hard, it's hard to say, but it looked as though when it came out where he ended up Could have been, it, but that play, know, that that play was going this nowhere. Friday, next Friday night here at the stadium at Good pressure off the end there, and I didn't catch the number, but there was a lot of pressure off the end that shut down that play. It'll be a second down and 10 ball at the 25 yard line. Split to the bottom, number 11, Bad R. Howe. Ball's a pitch out to number 24, Darius McNeil. McNeil still on his horse, being brought down by Reister, but not before McNeil, McNeil picks up some serious ground. And that will move the chains first down for the Patriots. Number 40, Reiser. Ball is put down on the big blue 13 yard line. Couldn't tell if that was Friedman, Friedman in the defensive back position that got caught, a, caught back a little bit. Riser made a heck of a play coming up though to make that stop. See if the big blue D can knuckle down and hold the Patriots on a nice drive. Handoff comes again to McNeil. McNeil is dragging, pulling it down to about the three. The fumble on the ball. It looks as though the big blue have picked it up. We'll see where the call is. But there is that McNeil fumbled the ball. The big blue pick it up. It looks as though it was picked up by number 66, Noah Carrera. And so the big blue do sort of put up a wall and they stop it. Knuckled, the knuckled, knuckled down, play. Mark. They and gang tackled the McNeil. They had about four guys holding him up and one guy must have stripped it out. That's great. a heartbreaker for the Patriots. Heartbreaking for pa the Patriots, but great coaching for, uh, I'm sorry, great coaching for Swampscott. They held up that running back and they were able to strip the ball. Under six minutes to go in the game. The big blue up and in a big way, it is 20 to nothing over Revere. I'd love to see them uh, play action out of the backfield and go to McIntyre deep. In motion, number one, Luke Cody. Oh, he's gone. Oh, and here comes Bascon. Bascon could be today at the races. Bascon turns, and he will be brought down at about the 43, 44 yard line. Woo! But not before the well, iron man lifts up some turf. Whoa! And I think if he kept going, Mark, he might have gotten some more corner. yardage. He could have made it. He could have made it. He might could have, have gone, gotten it. a little bit more I was yardage. ready to do my Chris Berman. He make, and then I had to stop. First and 10 for Swampscott from the Revere. 24, yeah. Great run, great run off the... Uh, Bascon's got some speed and he's got some power and if you let him loose, look out. He was he was in their secondary fast. Big Blue have a first down on the Patriot 44 yard line. January in the backfield. The bottom of your screen is McIntyre. Ball is handed off to January. January's got a little bit of room, still on his feet, carrying. Just maybe a little short of the first down would be a second down and nine, depending on the place. That's how you finish a run. January put his shoulder down with three guys on top, and he knocked number 11 from Revere back another two yards. Heck of a run by Little Tank. At our how on the tackle, it will be a second down and one. Ball is on the 35-yard line for the Big Blue. <clears throat> Frary coming in with the play. Clock starting to wind down. This one becomes more and more difficult, if not completely impossible now for the Patriots on a second down and one. Bascon is back in the backfield. To the bottom of your screen is McIntyre. Up Mac top McIntyre's is number 21. If McIntyre Arturo runs a Vasquez. slant. Sorry, Mark, but if McIntyre runs a slant, he's got some room there. Bascon with the ball, trying to turn the corner. we we'll lose one runner with a stiff arm, brings it down to about the 29 yard line but not before he gets a first down on the play nice stiff arm you don't see that much anymore no nope. bascon's had a great game today fairy bascon the uh bunch of kids had a great game for for swamp scott first intent for swamp spot from the revere 31 yard line yeah this was a Nice bounce back game for Swamp Scott Mark. Absolutely. Captain showed up, senior leadership, got the, got the train back on the rails. 
Number 21 to the bottom of the screen is Arturo Vasquez. And number two, Tashawa up top on a first down and 10. Ball goes to January. January looking for a little room, crushes through, maybe gets one or two. Not much there. Brought down on the play, I believe by number 22 for the Patriots, January, Zach Furlong. One yard game. Looks like Swanscott's content. And nine with about three left to go in this one. Second Looks like Swanscott's content is to take a, as much time off the clock Absolutely. and just run this out. Absolutely. 20 to nothing. It's been Absolutely. a pretty good performance by yeah. Swanscott. The coaching staff must be pleased. Yeah. Vasquez to the bottom along with number two to Shawa up top. January in the backfield, second and nine. Here comes a passing play, looking deep, and he's got him. Touchdown, Swampscott on a 30-yard bomb to number 21, Arturo Vasquez. Yes, sir. Beautiful pass. How about that? that I thought they were running it out, Mark, and all of a sudden they go for that big play. Great, great play there. We got a flag on the play. Uh oh, maybe a little too much celebration for you and I. I think that might be what it is. Well, I, think I'm I, think and I, I think they're going to call it back on us, but we'll see. It could come back. Call it back on the press box, maybe. <laughs> they put the points up on the board, but I think that it's going to hold because Frizzoli is in. Yeah, they might have called it on us. <laughs> no, you know what it was? It was, uh, it was uh, offsetting personal fouls, probably off to the play. There was probably a little... A little pushing Swanscott and shoving. Been, yeah, just giving them the business. So Vasquez with a 30-yard pass from Frary at the 239 mark. after the play... Touchdown Vasquez on the reception from Prairie. <clears throat> so Frizzoli in looking to make it 27 to nothing. On this, we can put this one into the record books, man. Yeah, Frizzoli's, Frizzoli's made most of his kicks this year. He's, he's been a little loose on a couple, and what I've noticed is he's, he's hooking the ball a little to the left, and he's got to correct that as the season goes on. Really strong kicking game, though, for a freshman. Great decent defensive game, too, tonight by the Big Blue because definitely Revere has had some chances. But when necessary, Swam Scott D has really come through. Right, bend not break. Stiffen their spine a couple times. Took the ball away uh, on, a big, on a big takeaway to, in, the, in this quarter. Uh, Revere was really pressing hard. Ball is down, the kick is up. That threads it beautiful. And at the 239 mark, Frizzoli makes it 27 to nothing, and this one can go into the record books now. Right? Absolutely. Revere, Revere, Revere looked okay tonight, but Swampscott just came with more energy, Mark, and, and Revere couldn't match it. But I got to tell you, hey, Swampscott had a huge... Uh, McNeil coughed up the ball with about, with about five minutes left. It could have been a ball game. They were inside the five, Absolutely, absolutely. They knocked on the door more than once tonight. I like the way that kid McNeil ran the ball tonight. McNeil's had a great game. McNeil has had a great game. We've got 2.39 left to go. Uh, thoughts on possibly an MVP for this evening? Yeah, I'd have to go back and uh, think about that because there's been a, a couple different kids from Swampscott that have really stood up. If I was going to give an MVP, I'd give an MVP to the senior leadership just because when you get that first taste of defeat, your season can go one way, it could go another. Revere came and played, but Swampscott just came and played harder. So the MVP goes to the team this evening, according to Mike. If we had to pick a solo guy, I'd have to say when it counted. I'd give it a number seven, the back, the eye man, Isaiah Bascon. He was a truck tonight, definitely over 100 yards. And, uh, but I can see where you're coming from, the team effort. Uh, everything really clicked tonight for Swanscott, though, especially in the second half. Frary got on target, ended up throwing two touchdown passes, one, two, three touchdown passes, excuse me, uh, two for 30 yards, one for 15. Uh, it was just a, a tremendous effort on the part of the Big Blue this evening. Frizzoli getting set to kick it off. Kicks it, oh, it goes up into the air. It's still loose. And falling on it is number 22, Zach Furlong. Well, that's why you kick it on the ground in the high school game, Mark. It's tough. It's like a, it's like a uh, greased pig at times. It's a squibber. And then that ball all of a sudden becomes almost transparent because you've got just a, nothing but a bunch of blue in front of you, which sort of shrouds the ball. And it went off of two to three hands before finally Furlong was able to, to knock it down and sit on it. And you got some big kids pressing down on you, making it hard for you. 
First down and 10, ball is on, looks to be the 16 yard line. Well, there's a lot of future here on this Revere roster. A lot of young players that are going to be back and make this community really proud in the upcoming years. What year is McNeil? Is he a junior? McNeil is a junior, so he will be back. And it's tough to it's tough to come out with a uh, freshman quarterback, but he's, he's really done a good job tonight. Has he hasn't uh, given the ball up? Has not thrown an interception? McNeil carries the ball for six. It'll be second down and four. Second and four for Revere. For the Patriots, closing in on the two-minute mark here in Revere. Looks like Troy Levine's in. I'm sorry, that's... Everybody Ethan, breaks Ethan, off out of the backfield. Now, I'm at the sorry. bottom of your screen is John Murphy. Ball is handed off to number 23 on the play, Lucas Barbosa. And he gets a first down well, for, for the carry Revere. For a first down for Revere. Clock stops while those Jake chains Cullen. get put into yeah, motion. Ball is on the 32-yard line, first and, and 10 for the Patriots. Fans are starting started. to make their way to the exits. Right. Hopefully I'll be able to get a cheap hot dog on the way out. First down and 10, ball on the 32. Ball is thrown deep. And it's going to be an interference. We'll see if yeah. we've got a flag, and we do. Yeah. Ball was intended for number 33, Andy Malo, Malo, and they're going to call that defensive pass interference Cla on the big blue. Classic interference there. The yeah. uh, Swamps got defended. Didn't know the ball was in the just air. Just get tangled up. He never turned right. around just to try to defend. Up. If he had turned it around, if he had turned around, Mark, there wouldn't have been a flag. He had good coverage. You just have to whip your head around. Buck and a half left to go in this one. Uh, the yardage gets marked off the onto the 48 yard line. 47 yeah. yard line. If you don't think that defense for Swamp's got still playing hard, Mark, you're crazy. They need, they want, they, they don't need, but they want a goose egg up on that scoreboard. Yeah. Well, all they've got is a minute 35 left to try and produce it on a first down and 10. Revere will fan off. but tight on the formation. Pedro looking on a pitch out, comes back quickly. And number 28 on the carry is Matt Brito. Friedman came up fast, Mark, yep. uh, put it, put the first hit on him, and Brito then uh, the Oriaki finished him off. Nice play there by uh, Big Blue. Oriaki and Friedman in on the tackle. Second down and about. Cut. It looks to be second down and nine. nine Ball is on the 48 yard line, 48 and a half yard line. Clock is moving down to just approaching just under one minute left to go in this one. What up, buddy? How you doing, man? Second down and nine. Huh? Ball is pitched out to number 22, Zach Furlong. The fans now are getting very excited here, Mike, because the game's Andy. ending. <laughs> it's quite a crowd here in Revere. Yeah, yeah. T time to go. Cody, get on that. Down to the Volare. Was he calling you Skippy or me? I forget. <laughs> Down to Volare. Down to the Volare for a great meal here in Revere. Third and four. Third down and four to go for the Patriots as the clock runs down. Ball is on the 47 yard line. Split to the bottom of your screen, number 11, Bader Howe. This one now winding down. Dicing through on the play. It looks it to now. be a first down, and the clock is stopped, so those chains will get moved at least one more time Furlong for the carry. Patriots. Furlong gets the first down, the first down for, for Revere. Ball is on now, it looks to be the 41 yard line. Looks like they're just gonna let this clock run out, Mark. I would think so, and that is it. That's the ball game. The game 
comes to a conclusion here at Revere, the final score, the Swanscott Big Blue 27, the Revere Patriots nothing. Just on a brief recap, the scoring started for the Big Blue in the first period at the 8.33 mark. Mac, uh, 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 Jay Mack ended up with a 30-yard pass from Colin Frary. Dylan January would go in the second half with 11 seconds left to go on a five-yard burst, and it stood at 13 to nothing at the end of the first. They got onto the board quickly in the second half in the third period at the 3.08 mark. Tashawa ended up with a beautiful strike from Frary, a 15-yard pass, ended up bringing it up to 20 to nothing, and then Vasquez here with 2.39 left to go in the game, a 30-yard strike from Frary, and that's what she wrote. The final score here today at Revere, the Big Blue 27 and Revere nothing. We will have all the action of next week's uh, game uh, against uh, uh, Saugus that's coming to Swamscott. Big Blue coming back in a big way tonight, Mike. Great game for Big Blue. They put the goose egg up on the board for defense, but I got to tell you, I was really impressed with Frary. I don't, I don't know what his stats are. I wish we had his uh, completions as to attempts, but I think he was pretty efficient, and he threw three touchdown passes. And that ball to uh, that last ball was beautiful, but I'll tell you, McIntyre, that touchdown, with interference, he dragged the defender in. It was a well-delivered ball, so all in all, I ran the ball defense. great, too. Everything really quick, uh, click tonight for the Big Blue. Well, that will do it for Ethan Runstadler, the Big Cat, and Mike Johnson. This is Mark McHugh on the Big Blue Sports Network saying, once again, the final score here from the Harry Della Russa Stadium, Swanscott 27 and Revere nothing. Good night, everybody.